Welcome back everyone. I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about anti-backlash nuts for your lead screws and some other theoretical ways to remove backlash that I thought I'd try myself. So this is a lead screw, this is a 2mm pitch, uh, which differs from the normal one that you get, which is 8mm pitch, and next to each other, you can tell that. I'm changing to 2mm from 8mm because I don't know why you'd want 8mm. Um, you get four times the mechanical resolution out of going to a 2mm lead screw. Uh, and while someone's bound to say, oh, but I've got a 1 trillion micron of uh, accuracy, um, that's f because of my micro-stepping. Uh, that's theoretical ac um, accuracy as opposed to actual mechanical accuracy. And some have tested stepper motors and they're only accurate within 1 degree-ish. And as you increase micro-stepping, you decrease... Uh, the torques. Uh, you do make it smoother though, so that's really good. So anyway, back to these nuts. So I bought this 2mm lead screw and backlash. Pretty bad, isn't it? Well, it's actually horrendously bad. There is some theory that you don't actually need to worry about it on the z-axis because you always have the weight of the the gantry or whatever pushing down on these nuts so it doesn't really matter. However, once you can upgrade, why stop? Uh, so this here is the normal nut that comes with it. Completely horrible. The next thing generally is a spring-loaded one like this, which is actually two parts, and it pushes them one part to the top and one to the bottom, and this is really your official anti-backlash nut. Uh, however, it doesn't it's not perfect. Uh, it's, it comes in two pieces. Well, I guess three pieces if you include the spring, of course. Let me take that off. It's probably going to explode in my face. Oh, there you go. And the spring pushes the two parts apart. But that does mean that there is a fitting which goes together, like that. And there is, although I doubt I can show this on the camera, there is play when this goes backwards and forwards like that, like which you can understand, obviously I'm making it bigger. So there is still actually some play in the anti-backlash nut. It's nowhere near as bad as the other one. The other option is to go for what I've heard on Ali is like, oh, you don't need an anti-backlash nut. Uh, you can just use a POM one, which is a plastic one. And that's what this is here, and they are right. This is super tight and has no backlash. Um, in theory, it'll wear out more. Uh, I would definitely say grease it, but that is true for all of them. Grease it, you know, metal on metal. There is the other thing I forgot to mention with these here, is that these don't actually fit in the standard system. When you're going, uh, yeah, you just put it in there. You just put it in there, it fitted. But it has this annoying spring, which makes it a lot fatter, and therefore it doesn't actually fit with the spring. So, I would definitely go with the uh, the POM nut, which is what I think the Persia does, or how you're supposed to say it. I have also replaced, I've gone from POM wheels to polycarbonate wheels. Uh, they say that the POM wheels are much harder than the POM wheels, and as far as I can tell that is true. So that it has to be good for um, rigidity to have harder wheels. The other thing I have done is replaced the screw nuts holding the steppers to the screws together because I really don't like these. However, uh, however, however, I bought a bunch of them, like bunches of these. There's another one over here of different types, different lengths and whatnot. They're all basically the same though. However, none of them actually end up with the with the nut turning straight. They're slightly offset. The littlest one, funnily enough, is actually the most straight one. So I'm quite disappointed. I'm mainly disappointed because I bought this whole system for 10mm screws and that is bang on perfectly in the centre. I'd also like to point out that some people might be complaining about bent um, rods. It's actually not the rod, it's actually the the fitment is off center, which causes the wobble, which may or may not be true. You know, I'm sure you can definitely get bent um, 
rods, but I know these ones were perfectly wonderful. They did, however, come with these ridiculously horrible nuts. Okay, it's done now, put all together, and it is so much better than it was before. Can't get over it, but that is in part because of the original 3D printed parts that were just horribly printed uh, and flexible. Uh, before I left you, I uh, want to leave you. I did want to have a bit of a talk about the spring couplers. Now, I said one of the problems with the spring couplers is that they're a spring, so you can push it together, right, and pull it apart. Pulling it apart is debatably not too much of an issue but you can have a problem of it being pushed together because obviously it's like this and I hate anything with a spring in it uh, and I have realized that you can actually use the spring to your advantage if you actually stretch the spring if you like and use it to pull the two parts together okay so now you can see that there's quite a big gap there what I've done is I've actually pulled this down or pre-tensioned it and what that does is that pulls the motor and the screw together and that actually gets rid of the uh, downwards springiness, which is excellent. That does leave uh, one last place for springiness, which wasn't that noticeable on this printer, but was definitely noticeable on my uh, uh, NEMA 28 printer, and that is that the motor itself has spring in it. Well, yeah, it does have spring in it. Some motors have a lot and some don't. Um, I've got some motors that have got no spring in it and others that do although probably people will claim that they do all have spring, it's just a harder spring. So what happens is there's actually a spring on the back of this, which prevents, which holds the motor roughly in the centre. Uh, and so when you have force going down on it, that springiness will allow the, the axis to move up and down. And it's literally a spring washer, like this on the back of it. which allows a bit of movement. Uh, so in my NEMA 23 I bought a whole bunch of 0.1 shims and I just removed that washer and put enough shims in there until it didn't have that movement. And like I said, I didn't realise that there actually was movement in these, uh, or at least on my printer's ones, because everything else was so floppy <laughs> you couldn't really tell. So yeah, unscrewing the, the motors, popping that off, putting 0.1 shims in there and removing that would help remove that final bit of movement. But yeah, I thought adding pretension on the spring was a really good idea because I don't like the springiness because of course that um, results in inconsistent layer height. Um, obviously there's links to stuff in the description below and a reference to the video about 3D printer accuracy. Alright guys, I shall see you on the next one. Bye bye.